Hi everybody, you're watching the second part in the series I'm putting together on the five specialized classes I've worked out for Call of Duty Black Ops Multiplayer. This is Lesson 2, Use Offensive Classes. In our last video, we went over the importance of tactical insertions. Enemy spy plane incoming. As you might recall, we get our tactical insertion planted with our fast moving primary attack class, Eddie. Once we have our tactical insertion planted, we can switch to our hard hitting secondary attack class, Roland. Friendly default strike on the way. Of all the classes, Roland has the greatest survivability and battlefield presence. We can use these attributes to steamroll our objectives, and none better than control points in the domination game mode. We'll start with Roland's loadout. Generally speaking, perk slot 2 does the most to determine a class's weapon selection. In perk slot 2 for Roland, we have the Warlord perk. The greatest advantage to Warlord is the extended payload of tactical and lethal grenades it gives you. Throwing a concussion grenade onto a control point is an excellent way to prime it for capture. Stun the defenders, then roll in there and take them out. Once you're on the control point, use the remainder of your grenades to check the perimeter. Tacticals first, then lethals. Throw them into windows and doorways, into any corner you think the enemy is likely to come around. When you have one risky area covered, turn your attention immediately to the next one. By doing this, you're creating a bubble of security around yourself and your objective. That was an example of a point capture. Before we go to our next example, we'll do the rest of Roland's loadout. The other major advantage that the Warlord perk offers is the ability to equip two attachments with your primary weapon. So what we have is a commando equipped with a silencer and extended mag. The silencer keeps you from attracting unwanted attention and reinforcements while you're taking a point. The extended mag is absolutely vital in this loadout because you will frequently be breaking from cover and exposing yourself to carry out objectives. Reloading is very dangerous in this situation, so you have to milk that first clip for all it's worth. You might have already noticed the flak jacket perk in perk slot 1. When you have an objective to carry out in a hotly contested area, again, I'll give capture in the second of three control points in domination as an example, this is the perk you want to be using. Flak Jacket eliminates your vulnerability to explosives, which you are much more likely to be exposed to on a control point than anywhere else. When you move onto a control point, your opponents get an announcement about it, and you're usually greeted by a hail of grenades. Without Flak Jacket, you're often forced to abandon the point or die, but with Flak Jacket, you're able to weather the storm and stay on the point. In our secondary weapon slot, we have a Python equipped with Speed Reloader. This is completely out of consideration for the time you will spend on the ground in second chance mode. Aside from looking and sounding great, the Python is the best sidearm to have with you on the ground. It's the only pistol that grants you one-shot kills in hardcore mode. That's important because one-shot is all you will get in many cases. One thing I want to get out of the way because this is sort of a hot-button issue, there's a lot of servers out there with admins who will heckle you about using second chance. All I'm going to say is they have no right to do so, second chance is a part of the game, and you should be allowed to use it. Don't let them make you feel bad, and remember, you're just playing the game the way it was designed. That said, you have to be careful about how you use second chance, because it can hurt your game as much as it can help your game. Lying around on the ground when there's no one to get you up wastes your time, and when there is someone to get you up, you're wasting their time as well as exposing them to danger. But again, when it comes to taking a control point, every bit of longevity you can etch out for yourself is valuable. As you'll see at the end of our next piece of gameplay footage. This comes from another domination game on the Hanoi map in hardcore mode. I'm showing you this to get you extra familiar with the routine we're trying to establish. At the start of a game, use your primary attack class, Eddie, to run to a favorable spot on the map, close to your objective, that you know how to reach safely, then, plant your tactical insertion, 
and you can use Roland to take over from there. So I'm loading into the server about 10 or 15 seconds behind everybody else. Hardcore domination. Capture the objectives. Securing Alpha. I'm making a beeline for the B control point. The B control point is generally the best situated and most heavily contested spot on the map. You won't see the class selection menu in this recording, but while I'm putting my tactical insertion down, I'm switching to Roland. Friendly spy plane inbound. Be secure. As you can surmise, I haven't contributed greatly to my team's success up to this point. But I want to show you what happens eventually, closer to the end of the game, when the opposing team retakes the B-control point. This occurs about six minutes further in, so we're jumping ahead. All this time, I've been maintaining my tactical insertion placement in the same building. Having the opposing team retake the B-control point puts me in a position of significant I'm leverage. marks the end of this part of the series. This has been Lesson 2, Use Offensive Classes. Stay tuned for Lesson 3, Use Defensive Classes. I'm Gameslinger589.